Good afternoon, everyone. This is the monthly meeting of the Dighton Stormwater Committee. It's Wednesday, September 18th, 2024. It is 1.04 p.m. Calling this meeting to order. We are in the upper level meeting room at the Old Town Hall, 1111 Somerset Avenue, Dighton. This is a public meeting being video and audio recorded for posting on YouTube. And we have the ID here for the um, anyone who wishes to join by Zoom. And I noticed we have some uh, people on to attend virtually. We stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, to and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we'll have a roll call vote. Barbara Cotavi of Waterhill. Lisa Caledonia, Conservation Angus. Ferries in the streets. Nancy Goulart. Um, Dave Phillips sent an email and he was not going to be able to make it. So you can just note that. And um, if you get the names of those present here, like you usually do, plus whoever is on the video. Um, I didn't hear from Mr. Woods or Mr. Agia, so I don't know if they're coming late or not. Is Mr. Hafez? I don't see him there. No, Mr. Pearson keeps trying to come in and he keeps leaving. He's not behaving. Um, I had heard from Mr. Hafez and I told him if he Wish to sit in, that was fine. Okay. Long sure. um, Mr. Pearson, can you hear me? Yes, I can. You can you hear me? Yes, fine. Uh, what projects are you here? Are you just sitting in? And then if we, if you have a comment or something, you'll chime in. Right, yeah. Um, really, I think the main thing I'm here for would just be the, uh, uh, the Brook Street solar projects that okay. you mentioned. Those uh, representing, and uh, aside from that, um, I saw on the agenda that there were maybe uh, there might be a request for some updates on some other projects. Which um, at this time we don't have any updates on those other ones. So really, the only thing I'm here for is the the Brook Street project. Okay, um, Mr. Hafez has not called in, um, so uh, I'm going to ask for a. Well, I got to wait for Lisa to come back. I'm going to ask for a motion to. Skip uh, for a Brook Street Solar at this moment to see if he, he comes on. Uh, but we do have other projects represented here. But if I don't see him coming on pretty soon, we'll just go back to this and, and wrap it up, okay? Okay. Um, I'm waiting for Lisa to come back. Um, I'll just give you a quick, quick update. Uh, here, she, here she comes. So could I get a motion to take agenda item 4B, MACS, Arujo out of order? I'll motion that. Second. We have a motion and a second, any discussion? Hearing that, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Lisa? Aye. All right, vote unanimous. Um, <laughs> Uh, Mr. Pearson, do you have anything on Arujo MACS? I do not at this time. Okay. Uh, anybody here from MACS Arujo? Uh, does anyone here on the on the uh, committee have anything or have any questions about this one? Mr. Pearson, I think the last time I talked to Jim Reardon, you were still waiting for some final as built. On this one? I believe that's correct. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, so um, we'll move on to the next one. Um, this will be on the agenda again for next month to see if those as built as built are in, and if we can get a, a report uh, from Weston and Sampson about what is in those plans if they come in. Uh, I'm going to continue with the agenda. Uh, five, five active project updates. Weston and Sampson, if any. This is 5A, Blue Wave Solar, Tremont Middle Streets. I see we have Greg and um, Alexandra. Is anybody in the audience for Blue Wave? Okay. So uh, Greg and Alexandra, <clears throat> and Mr. Pearson, if you have anything you want to ask, feel free. So Greg or Alexandra, if you have anything to report or an update or um, anything at all about the project. Oh, no, no major updates. Uh, we've got great grass growth out there. I believe at this point we are waiting for the uh, conservation to close out the permit and then we can get this one closed out and do the motion to close this one out and we have the conservation meeting tomorrow. So I, that, that's really all I've got at this point, but everything on site is quiet and going well. And generating? Yep, generating. Okay. Do you have anything, Lisa? Uh, we were waiting for Weston and Sampson. Um, they needed to file the necessary ethics paperwork, and they have done that. So Jim Purcell um, <clears throat> said they were all set to proceed on working on the project. So that was just last week. We haven't gotten any reports as far as conservation goes, any updates. Um, so, you know, Tomorrow night we'll be continuing to our October meeting. I'm hopeful before the October meeting. Okay. That we'll be able to receive something from Weston and Sampson and close out in October, assuming that the as built match the design things. Okay. Uh, Mr. Pearson, do you have any comments or questions on what Lisa just said? Um, I don't have any comments or questions, no. Okay. Um, Greg or Alexandra, um, I expect we're going to get some rain, probably not enough to take care of everything that's dried up and died. Um, ballpark, when are you looking to replace the evergreens that died? Maybe October, late September? Yeah, so um, it's probably going to be later this month. I have our civil contractor sourcing, though, so once I get a day, I will uh, keep everyone in the loop. Okay. Is there anything else on um, Blue Wave Solar? Nope, um, just confirming from my end um, that they, there will not be the meet. We will not discuss this at the conservation tomorrow night. Well, the hearing, I mean, it's on the agenda. So, you know, if you wanted to come present the asphalt plans to the Conservation Commission, you could do that. All right, excellent. I'll plan on being there. Okay, sounds good. Okay, uh, moving on. Five uh, B MACS. Well, we've kind of covered a Rujo, so we don't need to do that one again. Five C one hundred two Sunny's Way drainage. Is anybody here for that, Mr. Ferry? I, I just got a quick update. So last week they did an exploratory dig by hand. You know, they called dig safe. Uh, they need to find the elevations of the, the underground utilities to finish constructing the, the actual plan that they're going to be uh, utilizing uh, so that where the utilities are and whatnot and the metal on top of our structure, it, it will work, it will flow. It'll be just a little less than um, the plumbing's pitch, but it will flow okay. nicely. Okay, so we'll have this on the next meeting for a progress report or whatever. I believe uh, Jim is what, unless you already know, I don't know if Jim got back to you. I believe Jim was trying to get his hands in that actual connection permit. Jim who? I have uh, the connection permit. Because we had one before. Do you, you, you don't have one, right? I haven't heard from him about this. Right. I know he's working on this one. So oh, okay. Unless you already heard from him. No, no, I haven't. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. He's, he's working on getting his hands on it. Right. 
Okay. And, um, All right. I do know, I forget his name, but the gentleman that the owner had working for him on this, the engineer, uh, he did contact me as far as conservation goes, and he's planning to file with conservation. He just hasn't done that yet. Yeah, he's planning on doing the RDA. Yes. And this plan that I'm just alluding to is for you guys to review. Great. Yes. That's it at this time. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Uh, new business, Zero Horton Street. Uh, here reports act on. Um, I think uh, Tom and Lisa, did you make a site visit to this location? This is the home that sits way off the road. Yes. So I received an email from the property owner just asking if we will do a final site visit so we can sign off on the permit. So I guess we need to set up a site visit. So we need some dates. And so um, Give me some dates. I'll get in touch with him just so that we can go out there. I know. Uh, did you have anything to report? I know you said I thought there was one or two minor things or he was going to take care of something. No, he's going to do some minor additional work. At least as I'm aware of it. I, I don't believe it, but uh, interferes with the stormwater from that. I uh, believe our permit expires early October, if I remember right. Uh, yeah, we did extend it, but yeah, the deadline's coming up. Well, any particular day of the week that's better, and I'm thinking a morning. Not a Monday morning. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> Mondays aren't good for me for the most part. But a morning meeting. Um, Tuesday morning? That um, was Tuesday, October 1st, or Wednesday, October 2nd. Oh, yeah, okay. Either of those. Well, speak of, the, I thought you were going to zoom in on, <laughs> welcome. Uh, yeah, either one would work. Okay. Um, what time in the morning you want to do this? You want to do it at nine? Sure. All right. So these are tentative. I'll try October 1st. I'll get in touch with the property owner and see if we can do October 1st at 9 a.m. or October 2nd at 9 a.m and send out an email. Um, and what's the address, 2651, is it? No, two, sorry. Do you know the address there? Oh, no, but I'll put it in the email when I send it out. Okay. Because we, we just identified this as <clears throat> Zero Horton Street. I did send him an email so he knew that we would uh, talk about setting up a site visit. But other than that, we weren't going to really discuss anything because the report I got was that what was out there was minor and would not hold up the site visit and signing off on the stormwater permit. So, um, yeah, the sites are very mostly stable. And uh, is the driveway paved all the way in, uh, or is it gravel? It yeah, it's got the binder all the way in to subsurfaces. Uh, I forget the date he's going to do the final paving. Um, he's going to wait for the spring. Yeah, oh, on the bridge is going to be adding some. Is it a bridge or a culvert? Uh, we're calling it a bridge. But oh, okay. All it's right. More like a culvert. Last time I was there, it was water with ducks swimming down the river <laughs> or, or the brook or whatever <laughs> it was. So um, when I get the date, I'll send out this email. I am not going to post this, but it's okay if we have a quorum, which means a typical site visit. You can look around, you can ask questions. There'll be no formal discussion and there will be no votes taken. If we have to, I should do it. When we have to take that vote, it'll be at the next stormwater meeting, which I assume is going to be to uh, sign off, uh, vote to close out the stormwater permit. But uh, you will be able to ask any questions. So this way, if whoever wants to go can go. And uh, we won't have uh, we won't have formal action, which would require a posting. Okay, all right. So uh, I will get back to you, uh, Heather. I will get back to you with that. And on the October agenda, we'll have probably a final report on this project. Okay, I'm gonna to return to agenda item 4A, Brook Street Solar. 
Uh, what we did was just pass over it because I was waiting for you to appear on the screen. <laughs> so on the screen, we have Mr. Pearson from Weston and Sampson. Did you read the report that I sent uh, late last night or early this morning? I'm not sure which one it was. Um, so I sent this out to everybody. I don't know if you had a chance. It was an attachment to an uh, email. Um, and it was issued by Mr. Ridden and Mr. Pearson from Weston and Samson. I am going to read it. Um, did you get a copy of that, Mrs. Bosley? You have one for her. You can have that. This is a public. This is a public document. Um, it's dated September 16, 2024, Dighton Stormwater Committee, Planning Board, and Conservation Commission. 1111 Somerset Avenue, Dighton, regarding 893 Brook Street Solar Field. Review of application for major modification of special permit, second review. The Stormwater Committee Planning Board and Conservation Commission. In accordance with your request, Weston and Sampson has performed a review of the latest submission materials associated with the above referenced application. Our initial review of this major modification application was summarized in our previous letter dated July 10th, 2024. On July 15th, 2024, the applicant submitted the following documents, which we have considered as part of this later, as part of this latest review. Comment response to review of special permit modification request, Brook Street Solar, Level Design Group. Three pages, July 15, 2024. Basin one and three repair, design sheet, level design group, one sheet, July 15, 2024. Routing Diagram, Basin Repair, HydroCAD Report 2. Level Design Group, 25 pages, printed July 15, 2024. From our previous findings, we had recommended that the applicant submit a revised design for stormwater basin number one, the northernmost stormwater basin on the site. This is also the largest basin there is. Uh, the largest basin on the site, uh, storm water basin on the site, to address the issue that the basin has experienced periods of prolonged standing water. The applicant has presented the modifications to this basin as the sole subject of their application for a modification to the special permit. One of our suggestions has been that the basin could be redesigned to function as a stormwater detention basin rather than its currently proposed function as an infiltration basin. We had previously commented on the proposed design in our letter from July 10th, 2024. Those comments are reproduced for reference in gray text below with updated comments in boldface type based on our review of the most current submission. So these were the comments that were first submitted from Weston and Sampson. The applicant appears to have embraced the concept of converting the infiltration basin to a stormwater detention basin. Plans show the addition of a layer of stone with an under drain system and a four inch outlet pipe that will allow for a slow controlled release of stormwater discharging to the northeast of the basin. We agree that this is a reasonable approach given that recent site investigations have shown that the site seems to be unsuitable for the installation of an infiltration basin. That being said, some degree of stormwater infiltration will still be possible in this basin in perpetuity to the maximum extent practicable since a deep layer of coarse sand was previously installed below the basin bottom. The approach of converting basin one to a detention basin may require a waiver from town bylaws and from the mass stormwater handbook to allow the applicant to provide recharge only to the maximum extent practicable due to existing site conditions. We offer no objection to such a waiver. So this next sentence was underlined in that previous uh, letter. The applicant should identify the applicable, applicable regulatory standards that they are seeking a waiver from and provide those in a waiver request to the board. 
So the update that's part of this letter, 916-2024 from Weston and Samson. The comment is, Level Design Group, the engineer, has suggested a waiver request from section 5444 of the zoning bylaw. The section requires storm drainage design to conform with current Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection stormwater management standards and with the Town of Dighton stormwater bylaw regulations. More specifically, the request would be for a waiver to the provisions of said regulations to allow the, pro to allow the project to comply with the stormwater recharge requirements only to the maximum extent practicable. And this next sentence is underlined. We recommend that such waiver be granted in light of the existing soil conditions, which render the installation of stormwater recharge BMPs infeasible, BMPs uh, best management practice. I think a reference to the zoning board is not correct. It's not the planning board. Zoning hasn't been involved in this as far as I know. I believe so. He suggested a waiver from section 544 of the zoning bylaw. I'm just gonna pencil in planning board. Uh, yes, Mr. Yes, Ahmed. It's supposed to be planning board and we actually, we stopped down on this history days on the call on Zoom. We reached out to Mr. Carvalho and uh, Nick uh, from Level Design, we reached out to Mr. Carvalho sent in that uh, regulation that's cited here in the original report doesn't apply to this project and uh, th there shouldn't be a waiver required and Mr. Carvalho uh, responded in writing in an email saying that this uh, he agrees with that so there's no waiver required. Okay, uh, Mr. Pearson, did you hear that? And Mr. Reardon was copied on the email as well. Okay. Uh, Mr. Reardon is away. Yeah, I know he is. So um, I'm honestly having a little bit of a difficult time hearing Mr. Hafez, so I, I wasn't quite sure what he said exactly. Okay, okay. I question uh, a, actually a correction because the reference was the zoning board and it's supposed to be the planning board. So we all okay. agree to that. Um, Mr. Hafez, if you would just repeat the part about you contacted Mr. Cavallo and your conversation. Yes, uh, level design, when we received the report in early July, on July 10th or 11th, we sent an email to Ms. Easter Day and uh, she forwarded to Mr. Cavalio showing that uh, the standard doesn't apply to the project and we, there should, uh, we shouldn't be required to uh, submit a waiver. And Mr. Carvalho responded agreeing with, with uh, Mr. Uh, Fassendola from level design. And uh, uh, Ms. Easterday, uh, if she's on the call, I think she forwarded the email to both of you, uh, Mr. Pearson and Mr. Reardon. Okay, well, in any case, if, if the board wishes to give an opinion as to what they think is applicable and, and isn't, I, I would certainly defer to the board uh, as far as their interpretation of, of what's applicable. I, you know, I, I was, when I made that comment, I was going upon my own interpretation of what I thought applied. Uh, so, you know, if, if, if they differ on that, then I'll certainly defer to, to their view on that. I can forward the email again to everyone here. And uh, yes, I want to be copied on that. Um, Mr. Pearson, I'm going to, I, I will also state that um, when I saw that initially uh, and questioned zoning and said, no, that's planning. But my other thought was, uh, actually, if the waiver was required, it would have to come to stormwater, technically not the planning board. And I'm not aware that any of this is applicable. So um, again, uh, yeah, that's fine. You read it and you stated what you, you uh, what your opinion was. But again, having talked to Mrs. East today, uh, and her uh, communications with uh, Mr. Cavallo, when the stormwater committee took action back in August on this particular project, uh, our approval for them to move ahead was conditional 
based on the planning board. So I think we're all set there because I have heard nothing back from planning that would cause concern that this uh, any action Stormwater took was not appropriate, okay? So I'm gonna continue reading. Uh, item number two, this was from the previous email, excuse me, the previous letter. Um, plans show the addition of a stone layer in the basin floor. Calculations indicate that the bottom of this layer will be at an elevation of 75.5, and the top of the layer will be at 76.5. The plans provide the top elevation, but do not provide the bottom elevation of the layer thickness. So underlying this is the recommendation. We recommend that the engineer provide this information on the plans and the response of from Weston and Sampson. Uh, the plans have been revised to show the bottom elevation of the stone as requested. This, this comment has been addressed. Uh, the recommendation number three from the, the previous, excuse me, letter. The calculations for basin one include an allowance for infiltration to occur at a rate of 0 0.27 inches per hour as one of the quote outlets unquote for water to leave the basin during the model storm events. Based on recent experience, which has shown that the basin does not seem capable of dewatering at a reasonable rate. It seems that it would be a better approach to assume that the basin will be entirely incapable of having infiltration occur as a quote, outlet, unquote, <laughs> for stormwater. Uh, recommendation underlined, we recommend that the engineer revise the calculations to eliminate the infiltration outlet. And the September 16th reply comment from Weston and Sampson. The engineer has revised the stormwater model to eliminate the infiltration, quote, outlet, unquote, from the stormwater basin. This comment has been addressed. And in closing this letter, it says, in addition to the foregoing items, which relate to basin one, as part of the special permit modification request, the applicant has also presented some corrective actions on the submitted plan that pertain to basin three, which is the southeasterly basin on the site. The applicant has presented these latter actions as measures that, that are intended to bring the basin into compliance with the original approved design and that they therefore do not require modification to the permit. We concur with the assessment. The corrective actions that are proposed at Basin 3 consist of some regrading of the basin floor to ensure positive drainage toward the basin outlets and some changes to the basin outlet pipe ends within the basin. These adjustments have been included in the stormwater calculations that were submitted. Underlined this, the actions proposed at Basin 3 as presented in the plans and calculations appear to meet the intent of the originally permitted design and we offer no objection. Weston and Sampson appreciates the opportunity to present our findings and we look forward to discussing the next steps toward resolving the issues related to stormwater management at this project site. Please contact Jim Ridden if you have any questions and it has contact information here for Jim Ridden and it was signed by James Pearson and uh, Jim Ridden. So this is the latest, I assume this is the final report of what everyone was waiting for. Um, are you going to be at the planning board meeting tonight? So um, at tonight's meeting, will you be told when you can start uh, construction or move ahead with excavation or whatever it is you're going to do down there? I think the decision already says condition uh, on this report. So we have it. Okay, but I'm just wondering at tonight's meeting, is there going to be any mention? I mean, I'm not sure. I think my thought is that considering how long this is, we've been working on this, we, the town and you, uh, 
I'm looking to find out when is construction going to start. So if that's the interpretation of this, when do you think you're going to start excavation or whatever? Okay. Now, the other thing we all know, when the work is done and everything is in its final shape, it's got to pass the test. Okay. That determines whether or not you can go live. So up to this point, uh, I believe you have the authority to, to do the work that's been recommended and reviewed and you've gotten the sign off from Weston and Sampson. So. And about the test, I think we've discussed before, if, we can, like if there's no rain for a month or two months, uh, we, we would like to bring in like uh, water trucks. Okay. That is something that as your work progresses, and we see if Mother Nature cooperates. Any um, any testing that's done that is not natural rainfall, um, I would ask Weston and Sampson to give this, the town some advice, okay? We have not encountered this anywhere on any of our uh, <coughs> stormwater basins on any of the solar farms. And I just want to make sure that if water is brought in to do the testing, it's brought in with sufficient quantity and major, I'll call it downfall or dumping of water so that as close as possible, natural conditions can be observed and tested as timed to see if these, the, the basin, especially the big one, drains properly. So yeah, before, before the actual testing begins, obviously, if we get lots of rain, testing can be done, observ observations can be done. But if that doesn't happen before water is actually brought in, I would want to hear from Weston and Sampson. Uh, Mr. Pearson, do you have any comments on that? Well, um, first of all, are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay. So I guess I would say that um, I don't I don't typically see on projects where there are conditions that are required of the applicant where they have, have to do some kind of testing. You, usually with these things, if they if they pass muster from the perspective of, of calculations and design materials that have been submitted, usually we consider that to be sufficient to demonstrate that these things will will be able to work. And given the fact that they've now converted this into a detention basin, we now know that it, it will be capable of fully draining. That is of course barring barring any barring any malfunction that might come as a result of lack of maintenance, such as an outlet pipe clogging or something. But to me, that's a whole different issue. That's a maintenance issue. So the issue on the table here was that we had a stormwater basin that was collecting water and the water was sitting in the basin and not draining within a reasonable period of time. Based on the way that they have designed this, if they can, if they construct it properly based upon their proposed uh, corrective actions, then we, we would expect that problem to to, to be non-existent. So I, I really think that probably the most expedient thing to do would just for there to be just a site visit at the conclusion of construction to confirm that it was built per plan. Because I, I, I feel confident in saying that if they do build it per plan, then we would not expect to see any more standing water issues. Okay, and as I said, we've never done this before to bring water into test basins, but this solar farm is a unique situation. It's been around since 2018, at least. Um, because of the nature of what has occurred there, and Mr. Aguiar, the building commissioner, is not present today, but he has repeatedly stated that if the basins don't work, he will not give them the go live. 
So um, we have discussed this with Mr. Hafez in the past. And I think the, the, in this particular instance, the necessity to test the ability for these basin, this basin, the, the big one especially, to drain in a timely manner is something we are going to have to require. That's why we've talked about it so often. So I don't dispute what you're saying on normal conditions, but um, if in fact the uh, mother nature doesn't cooperate and we can't get sufficient rainfall to actually observe how the basins drain and how the systems work, then we will request that water be brought in, in which case we'll let Weston and Sampson know. And uh, if uh, uh, somebody wants to observe it, fine, but we just want you to know that, that without sufficient rainfall, the town will require water to be brought in. Again, only because of the nature of this entire project. Does anybody on the committee have comments or questions relative to anything either? I read in the, um, uh, the letter from Weston and Sampson or anything that you've heard so far. Mr. Hafez. Yes, I wanted to uh, discuss when would uh, Weston and Sampson would like to be on site. And I'm going to suggest after we've built all the the pipelines, like the uh, the whole uh, net of uh, pipes there, and before we cover it with with the uh, gravel, the gravel layer, I think that's a good uh, inspection point, and we don't cover it until the inspection has been completed. Mr. Pearson, did you hear that? I did, and I uh, and I and I don't have any objection to it. That sounds reasonable to me. Okay, so when your construction company gets the all the pipes in and everything, but before they bury it, if you get in touch with uh, Weston and Sampson and let them know, uh, maybe even email a picture and say, this is what it looks like right now. Can you come take a look? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Does that work, Mr. Pearson? Yes, and, and if I could ask as a courtesy, if we could receive as much notice as possible as to the time and as to the day and time that we need to be there, uh, oh, sure. that would be appreciated. Okay, so if you could, as Mary, if, when you send the email out and say, we're starting construction today, excavation begins, whatever the date is. And uh, if it takes, let's say, as you move towards the end of the week, if it looks like it's not going to be completed that week, at the end of the week, you send the email out that says, the project is... Um, uh, the installation of the drainage system uh, is will be wrapped up next week, approximately on whatever day, which means it's all in, but it's not covered. But that way they can, uh, Weston and Samson can uh, arrange to have their engineer come out. Uh, they'll have staff available and anyone at the town level uh, on the boards or um, Mr. Agia, anyone conservation, anyone involved with this, uh, can go take a look just so if there's any questions, uh, we can get this all done. Sure. Uh, any comments again from the, I'll get you in a minute. Anything from the committee, any questions, concerns, Mr. Ferry, all set. Are we gonna need um, a detail there for the equipment that's coming in or is this just like the small equipment? It's, yeah. It's, like they did for the test holes? The, you know, it's a regular, regular going out. They wouldn't be open up traffic. Right. Okay. 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 Very good. Mrs. Fosole, did you have a question? Fosole, 1680 Pine Street. Yeah. Um, they have started planting the plants. Um, and, but I just have a concern. I, I don't know how to, uh, who would check it. They uh, started planting the plants in the uh, forested area and along the side, so it seems. Um, but there's this little machine that's, I'm not sure, so I only present it to you, that seems to be riding in the swale. It seems to be, from my perspective, I don't know because I haven't been on it, 
but if a little machine is riding in the swale, I'm afraid it's gonna flatten the swale. So is there, what committee would check the swale? Cause I don't know if it's doing it, maybe it's not doing it. I don't even know, but I present it because this little machine is there. Well, all Audrey Lee or to the west side? To the south side. Um, yes, yeah, Audrey Lane area. South of Audrey. So, south of Audrey. It, along the fence, the northern fence, there's a row of trees, then the swale, and then a row of trees. I see a little machine running back and forth there, and I just don't know. The swale is so important to that project. So I don't even know. I mean, maybe it's fine. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Take a look at it. Yeah, thanks for letting us know. Okay. And um, one other thing, <laughs> Mr. Ferry, if you're going to Brook Street, the first sign on the left should be a sign that said, it's two signs, actually. It's one that says, be a right when you get to Pine Street. And then it's also one for someone coming south on Pine Street to the left. Correct. The sign has been hit and you cannot see the bare right. So can that be fixed? It will be. Okay. Yeah, we have several in town, yes. Okay. And um, one more thing. Lisa, has, um, have you gotten that report that you were- The SWIPs? No. You have not. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I did have a communication from Todd Pilling. Yeah. And he said everything should be on site. So uh, if you go out with Mr. Ferry to check on the plantings or the swale or whatever, see if they're there. My he question, told me he read them my up, up until the point of his leaving. Right. So, so then I just want to know, are we going to be looking at SWIPs from, when did you start? 21? Yeah from 21, 22, 23, and then none from this year? Or like, when did you guys stop? What is the period you had them do SWIPs for? During the period of construction and after that and, and, until the pro project was stabilized, which goes back to like a year or something. It goes back to a year from now, you're thinking? When the site was fully sta stabilized, yes. Um, I guess I just have a question for Jim Pearson. Jim, in your experience, when sites are left kind of just not um, completed, do they continue to do the SWIP inspections? Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. So um, there is a procedure where if a site is going to go dormant for a period and there's going to be no construction activity, you can sort of do like some temporary stabilization. And as long as that's in place and as long as it's been inspected and it looks functional, then then the site can remain dormant. And then you can go for a period, uh, go for a period where you have uh, you have little, 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 if any inspections occurring because the site, you know, again, if it's in a state, if, if, if it's in a dormant state and it's been temporarily stabilized, then, uh, then you would not expect there to be any any issues at that point. But usually, wouldn't the town be asked if they can stop with the SWIP inspections um, and you know do like a dormant phase like that? The site is well, fully stabilized. Just to to clarify, the site is fully stabilized, not temporarily uh, stabilized. Has been fully stabilized during that dormant period? I mean, yeah, I guess that's my main question is, do you think they should have been providing us with the SWIP inspections all along or no? Well, you know, it, it comes down to a matter of if, if the site has been stabilized, if, if, it's in a, if it's in a state of stability, let's say, uh, then, then you would not expect to need to be having SWIP inspections coming in during that period. Right, so, but we we only, I guess I'd have to look at the time period because I do have photos from the site, but I feel like 
there was a lot of time that went by that we did not get the SWIP inspections and we did not have the site stable. Okay, yeah, I, I mean, I can't really speak to that specifically because, uh, you know, we haven't been in a position where we've been retained to, to, to be looking at the site and comparing it against, you know, the periods yeah. that they've been. I can pull up like, some air photos on near map and figure out, you know, a time frame, like a six month time frame, and then compare it to the SWIP inspections that are out there. I guess that's what I'll do. Okay, so okay. just on. If I can comment on the SWIP inspections, the first water incident, like rain incident, that water left the site. I remember everyone from the town was on site, and uh, Nick Fasendola yeah. was there, and, yeah. and you were at there the beginning, at right. the beginning. But I'm talking about like so, now in the past couple of years. I mean, I haven't seen inspections since around the time Todd left. Um, and and then Nick was asked to train the people on site and they were trained and okay. and they were doing the SWIFT reports and I found some of the emails sent to you okay. uh, from that period and you asked for some corrections and then it was done the way you wanted. And you that asked was them in to, what, 22? Uh, 21 during construction. And then since then, they were asked, I, I don't know if it was by the storm um, by the storm water or by the conservation commission to leave them on site, which what they did throughout this whole time until the project was stabilized, we demobilized everything from the site, the, the, the site uh, office, everything was demobilized from the site. The site has been stable. There has no, there hasn't been any incidents that were reported to the town. Well, they're not sure. Because no one's doing any inspections. Well, if there's any water, we always get emails. If there is anything, we always get emails. The conservation commission in this town is the most involved conservation commission I've seen in my life. I don't think something would be going on wrong on site and you wouldn't know and you wouldn't let me know right, about but it. I don't, I don't have the time to be there. And we, that's why we were talking. I'm, I'm not. I'm Mr. Not. Ferry, did you wish to comment? Yes, I, 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 when I, from where I am, my office in here, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I've got this. So I think what we're experiencing is unintentional dormant time. Right. So we have this repair that needed to happen, investigation needed to happen. So it was unintentional for this dormant period, if that's what we should call it, happened. It wasn't planned. If it was, mitigation would have been in place. The here and now, you're not going to have records between the last report and now. Okay, but now the site is going to be worked on again. Correct. So So that's a different question. You, right. you were alluding to what that gap, it, that gap that gap was an unintentional well, moment. Well, right, but even if it was unintentional, do we have any breaches? Do we know? I mean, how do we know? Yeah, you're not gonna know unless you do an inspection. So moving forward with the active work, now you're back to being peace. And, and the work which we incorporate your reports, Lisa. So if if you want them in an email fashion, yeah. now's the time. No, I mean, I think they need to continue with the SWIP inspections and they need to copy the stormwater committee because the SWIP is a requirement under the stormwater permit, sure. as well as conservation. I don't think it's continue, it's start up again because he is correct. There was a period of dormancy. Now, after the second reconstruction, when they dug up all the debris and the boulders and all that, and the new system was put in, um, and it didn't drain properly. I can specifically remember Jason being there and said, he's gonna dig up. I said, don't you touch anything. Don't you dig anything. Yeah, that was last year. Don't disturb right. anything. It was now getting back to the SWIPs. According to the email I got from Todd Pilling, he left here. I'm going to say around last June, not the one that just went by a year ago. Yeah. He said up to that point, he did see reports and the, he says they're on site, which is what uh, Mr. Hafez has said. Right. So the next thing that I remember happening after we told uh, Mr. Lachance, don't do anything. Well, I already said, don't do anything. Don't go back there. Don't do anything. The next thing that happened was because the basins didn't drain after the second 
construction project. There was more discussion. In the meantime, Weston and Sampson was hired to come on board. And that's when the decision was made, we need to go down and do test holes in the big basin. The basin three, they inspected us, this, this is mine and this can be fixed, but basin one is a problem. That's when there was some excavation done in the basins, not outside the basin, not around it or anything else, specifically in, the, in that, because Mr. Ferry and I were there when that occurred, as was Mr. Pearson. And, um, Excuse me, Mr. Lachance and two heavy equipment operators. So my understanding, uh, Tom, is that since that day, what has occurred is the revision discussion and all that of the plans. And we're at the point now that what has been proposed has been approved and there will now be excavation and construction uh, starting up again. Can, can you think of anything that would have disturbed anything other than uh, when the second system failed? And I know I told Ms. Dilchett, don't you dig anything. Don't do anything. And it, so that was stop everything. So it went dormant. And then nothing was done again until Weston and Samson was hired and the test holes were dug. And to the best of my knowledge, there's been no other excavation since the test holes were dug, the samples of the soil were taken, and then it was, those holes were filled in. Analysis was done and the discussion took place and the plans were revised. So that dormancy period, even though we had the period of test holes, the test holes did not reach the level of areas of disturbance that would have required SWIPs, SWIP monitoring reports. You, you agree with that? Do you, you agree with that? I do agree. Okay. The only thing I, you know, I'm just concerned that, you know, no one thought to come and at or ask us, can we stop doing SWIPs now? Right, is the site stabilized enough so we can stop doing SWIPs? I would say that's on us to, to identify that. Oh, okay, partially, but you know, he's got contractors there. But now going forward, are you going to have the weekly and the storm SWIP inspections per the SWIP? So my question is, is it required? Like it's, uh, I don't find it required. Like does this building Jim, provide uh, no, SWIPs? Jim, could you, could you help? Mr. Hafez on this, because um, were they going to be repairing the basins? I think that at least in the area of the basins, someone should be doing this erosion control inspections weekly and after significant storm events, correct? Mr. Pearson? Yeah, during basin construction, I would agree, yeah, because that's a site disturbing activity. Okay, so, and, and you need to, need to obviously make sure the erosion controls are really in good shape, have some extra on site, just like you're starting over again, because those things have, I'm sure have been trampled by a whole bunch of deer and everything else. There's probably all sorts of holes in them. But at least in the area of the basins. Sure. And there are some, uh, on the drawings, there are uh, provisions for all the uh, <coughs> erosion control. Yeah, mm -hmm. erosion control. So for sure. We can, and we can provide. And then keep them them. on site. And it would be great if you could provide us with copies. Okay. You know? We'll, we'll send them by email next time. Okay. That would be better. Because okay. if I have to go there, I mean, no, we'll send them by. There's so much going on in town for me to have to go to every site. If there are hard copies on site, I would request that there not <coughs> be added to the, the file plus the emails. So the emails are sent, print them out, and have them just stick one in there so that when this project is done, if somebody says, I want to look at this from beginning to end, we don't want it to come up to a point and stop and say, Oh, well, you've got to now go look at emails. Right. Uh, so, um, when those uh, SWIP reports start again. Um, with the construction. Right, with this new construction. Um, emails are fine, but I would request that print the email and just stick it in the box so it's all there, one complete file. Sure. 
Great, thank you. Okay, Mrs. Beausoleil. Um, you're talking about disturbance of the land. Does it count for the trees that they cut down? No, in a strip. The, the disturbance of the land, you're, you were talking We're talking about, about the reconstruction of the big basin. Okay, okay. so Swift's more concerned about uh, oh, sedimentation. Okay. Soil. Okay. So open areas of soil. Does it matter when they cut down the trees, though, if they if put down stumping. logs and or stumping because they did cut down the trees and on their on that land? Did they stop? No. No, they didn't stop. So no. Okay. Um, and one other thing, they are aware that they're supposed to be putting trees on the northern berm. Okay, because they haven't done that. They did the East Berm. No, we cannot do it before we fix the berm, right? Because we'll be going in and out. Well, I thought you would. Well, it's not going as far as you're going in. So we'll put them on the Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, anything else on anything anyone heard today about the uh, project on Brook Street? No? Okay, so. Um, we're going to uh, move on to uh, 6B Hunters Hill. Um, I got your email and you had some questions on documents I requested relative to the pilot. Okay, so if after this meeting you catch up with me, I'm gonna try to be at the planning board meeting tonight, but either that or just send an email, but uh, give me an idea what it is you need information on, okay? All right, I did report to the Board of Assessors this morning that uh, you have asked that that uh, be reactivated and what was in the email that I sent to you in the documents and information I requested. So, and I've sent an um, email to the Board of Selectmen requesting placement of an article on the warrant to approve that pilot agreement, assuming we've got it ready and set to go. Okay. Okay. Um. 6B, Hunters Hill. Uh, Mr. Pearson, I think you have some involvement, uh, you meaning Weston and Samson has some involvement with Hunters Hill. Am I correct? Um, yes, we have. Yeah. Okay. Um, we, yeah, we were retained to do a review um, for the Conservation Committee to review the NOI submission and also to review the stormwater improvements associated with uh, a community center that's being built uh, within the Hunter Still subdivision. And their review has not been discussed with the commission yet. Okay. Okay. I'm hoping to get the output before the meeting. Uh, if, if there are um, presentations or information or paperwork that is headed for planning or conservation or any other town board or official, uh, obviously Stormwater won't make final determinations till we all understand where we all are with whatever concerns we have that are shared. Thank you very much. It's uh, Evan Watson, W Engineering, represents the applicant. <laughs> As you said, we are we already have a stormwater permit. This is the Hunters Hill subdivision. So, if you recall, we came in, we received uh, order conditions, a special permit, and a stormwater permit uh, to construct the homes uh, and all drainage utilities, etc., uh, for the project. Um, part of one of the conditions of our special permit and one of the things that was always planned along the way was to add a community center uh, for the use of the residents of the, the community. <laughs> At the time, the design of that wasn't squared away, so we did not include it, but we promised that we would uh, come back and update everybody when we were ready, and that's where we're at now. Okay. So... Um, we are on the agenda tonight for the planning board to update uh, the special permit as a minor modification. And we are before the commission 
uh, with a new notice of intent to do just this work. And as you mentioned, uh, it is before Weston and Sampson. They did give a review letter, um, which I copied uh, you guys on, as well as our response to comments. And we were able to address all their comments. Um, again, I haven't heard back from them. I'm expecting that they're going to say everything is good to go. Uh, again, we didn't have any arguments with anything that they wanted us to do. Um, so I can step through our proposal. Uh, on the cover sheet, you just see where the community center is proposed. Um, it's along Hunter's uh, Club Hill Drive on the left side. And then part of what we're looking to do, there's an isolated um, non-jurisdictional by the state standards uh, wetland, but the conservation local bylaw does uh, consider that a jurisdictional area. Um, so we're proposing to fill that in, but also replicate the wetland area, as well as do a buffer zone enhancement. In that area, in the original plan, there was a road proposed right through here. So that road by the previous owner uh, was excavated and prepared, and then everything kind of stopped. So there's some exposed earth and kind of a messy zone. I should also mention that uh, Weston Sampson did do a site walk, and uh, Lisa and I did a site walk at that area yesterday. That green area is the, that's the area where the replication will be? That's correct. Okay. Yes, yeah, so the existing wetland, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. is all right here. Okay. And they're going to replicate right next to the existing border and vegetated wetland. Okay. So on this plan, on the top of the page is uh, Clubhouse Drive, the, the road. And if uh, anybody's been out there lately, Clubhouse Drive is actually paved. Uh, the drainage infrastructure is in, and it's looking pretty great, actually. They have um, three foundations in, um, one of which is just about done. I think I saw the moving furniture in it for the um, model home. And so we just occupy this area with a proposed community center. We have a, uh, two pickleball courts, a uh, shuffle pool and a bocce court along with the pool and surrounding patio. And then for the access, we have uh, a driveway that comes up through here and comes back on to Clubhouse Drive. And then uh, with all new subdivisions now, the Postmaster General doesn't want to deliver mail to every single uh, individual house. So it's common that they request that we have a mailbox kiosk so we added that there with the drive and turn around. Uh, as far as new drainage infrastructure again i mentioned that the previous design had a roadway that was there as well as many additional lots all through that zone so the drainage piping the stormwater basin everything was designed to accommodate much more impervious area, much more disturbed area that's going to it, what we're proposing now. So we submitted calculations to Weston and Sampson. Uh, their review letter agreed that you know, the basin is adequate to, to handle that, as well as all piping, catch basins, et cetera. Um, the only thing that they did mention was that the basin that was installed, and I think uh, you may recall when we walked out there early on, there's a, a wet basin there that's just all water uh, at the end of box wood lane. Mm -hmm. um, but there was, there was not a four bay that was in there. Um, so they just mentioned that in order to get the full 80% TSS removal, they requested that we add a four bay. So um, that's we, basin four? Yes, basin okay. four. Yeah. And again, that's, that's the basin that takes all the drainage for all of this area, it goes down to there. Um, so what we can do is we can add a fresh fill ground through there. Um, it's been sized to handle the amount of impervious area that it's going to it. And then while we're there, there is some uh, sediment that's right in front of, right where the pipe came out. So they can take that away 
and then there was never a flared end put on the end, so we'll put a flared end on there to, to just upgrade and retrofit what we have. Um, we're proposing some roof infiltrators, so it's the same thing that we've been that we um, promised we would do for all the individual houses. We take the roof and infiltrate it with some uh, stone infiltrators there in this fill area. Um, and then we have erosion control um, around the area. I mean, it, it is upgrading to all the resource areas. It's kind of strange that the resource areas are actually upgraded of our site, but it'll serve as a good limit of work so that we don't go into any of the other renovated zones. And then for the mitigation area, and this is the weapon back here. You can see the buffer zones are highlighted in yellow. And it could be put in pink. And we're proposing to do a, uh, what do we have for the area? About 8,200 square feet of mitigation. We did say that there is a little pool right here that we are treating as a burn pool. So adjacent to that, in our mitigation area, we're going to activate that down and attempt to create additional vertical habitat. This, this is um, it's probably about the size of this table here. It's not very big, so we can enhance that by adding some more water area there. Uh, we have a planting list, and then outside of that, through here is where all that soil is excavating. So we'll add some topsoil. Uh, we specify a seed mix. And we'll add plantings uh, as well as up to here. And then um, again, the original drainage design that was done back in 2006, since there was a road here, this picked up all the drainage that came um, off of this area and brought it into the detention basin. So instead of doing that, since there's no road, we propose this swale um, that goes off the beach and continues here and gets picked up in this catch basin and brought to the basin to honor the original design. Mm -hmm. Cross section is exciting. Some details mostly of the principal walls, construction entrance, the sidewalk firm, et cetera, and then we have the, the seat mix. Um, so again, what I'd like to do is ask that we essentially just modify the existing permit that we have um, to allow for this construction, considering that we already have a um, construction period uh, pollution prevention plan in place. We have a post-construction pollution prevention plan in place. Um, we've done all of our stormwater calcs, et cetera, um, that this commission reviewed and had approved. And this would just be to um, accommodate the additional disturbed area um, that we're looking to accommodate here. Um, so certainly I'd uh, entertain any questions that anybody has. Um, we're looking to close the, we're hoping to have everything squared away with planning board tonight. And then um, the same thing, we'll be asking for a, uh, to close the hearing at conservation tomorrow. And it's, if everything goes well, they'd like to get started right away so that the construction happens during the you know dry period. Um, if we're you know when all the permits are in place is when they're gonna get going. So it'd be best to be able to do that um, before the winter comes because the okay. site does turn from being a nice dry construction site to a yeah. pretty sloppy mud pit. So so, so you heard the previous discussion. So uh, they're do wanting to do construction too and they're hoping for dry. But after that, they need rain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So well, that's, this is the perfect time for that because it's nice and dry now. And then once Halloween hits it's, and all the leaves are gone, even without rain, we're just going to have everything's going to be wet. Okay, so the minor modification is going to the planning board. You're also going before the CONCOM to take care of whatever is relevant to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. When you said a modification, a minor modification to the permit, were you looking to do anything to the stormwater permit or that's all set? And these are just because of the minor modification. These are the other things you have to do. 
We're not looking to modify the drainage at all, other than okay. that, uh, uh, this crushed stone berm for the four bay. Okay. Everything so, else is already constructed and already accounted for. Okay, so um, I would request that you put something in writing to indicate that the only additional uh, work that would be involved that would involve the stormwater committee is what you just described. Uh, just so that we have it and it will be in the file mm -hmm. uh, so that if anybody says, wait a minute, they had a stormwater permit. There's nothing here about this, you know, what you just described with the question. Yeah. So um, I believe once you are all set with uh, planning and CONCOM and you give that to us, obviously we coordinate with them. If any board committee commission or town officials says hold everything, then we're going to hold everything. But as long as everything is moving along, just like with that other project that we approved conditionally, and I realize we don't need to take a formal vote to approve what you're talking about. Uh, all of the records would indicate you checked with everybody and everything that was discussed or agreed to, or you're going to provide some crushed stone or whatever. All of this has been taken care of. This isn't like nobody knew about that. Where did that come from? Just yeah. so that once it gets going, it can keep going and continue on. Mm -hmm. um, and unless something really unusual happens, um, the uh, stormwater committee would do inspections and things like that. But we would not be, um, we would be getting monthly updates, which is the kind of things we get on some of these solar farms that we're still waiting for as built plans or stuff like that. So that would be basically the only thing we'd need going forward. Mm -hmm. okay. Other than the SWIP inspections that you already get, right? You got those, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You got you got copies. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes, I get the emails. Yeah. So, does anybody on the committee have any questions, uh, Evan? Questions? No. Comments? I, I already shared it with Evan. I, I that wetlands I agree. We produce, uh, we produce in the end. Uh, I believe it's man made, anyways, and they're actually making a better ecosystem on that person there. That where they're going to replicate is yeah. uh, it's pretty cool from the previous construction that was done yeah. or excavation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, my only other question after I said was that I was thinking about this, so, especially the enhancement area where I saw a lot of that good flowering mm -hmm. stuff in there. Yep. Um, you're not gonna really, you're not gonna remove that soil, right? So you can just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, no so all the seeds will still be there as well. Yeah. So this area, all up in here, is all vegetated. All we're looking to do is implant it within it. Well, I was thinking. And then through here, yeah. there is this <laughs> here, but we can use that. We do have to excavate that down to, to yeah. create that swale. And that's going to be maintained? Yes. Meaning so like that's cut a couple times a year? Right, exactly. And then so make sure it's free of litter and uh, tree falls. But it can like have that. flowering stuff in it? As long as it's not an impediment to the drainage. Yeah. You, know, you have to, you know, if you, if you don't maintain it at yeah. all, it's like a basin. Mother Nature will take over and turn it into a forest. Right, so like a couple of times a year you try it. Yeah. 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 And that's why we didn't have plantings along the side. But you know, when construction, uh, you, know, you want to do the least amount of work possible. You know? So when they excavate this material, they're going to end up with topsoil. And the best place to put that would be you know, in the areas that have no topsoil. Okay. So you're right. That, that right. material that's excavated will be placed next to where it Sounds came from. Good. So when this whole development is finished, all the houses are built and everything else, if anyone were to drive through that, would they see areas that I will say a natural vegetation areas got nothing to do with drainage? In other words, as this project was being built, it was like, we don't need to do anything over there. Leave it alone. Uh, I think of that patch they got in front of the Aggie school. I don't know if you've seen it, the natural, mm -hmm. you, you see all the green lawns, you drive by and you see all these weeds and they got a sign out there explaining to you. Uh -huh. This is natural vegetation. I think they mow it once or twice, but they don't, it's not lawn. So will there be areas like that? I call them natural areas somewhere around this. Yeah, so this is a conservation subdivision. Okay, all right. And I don't remember the total number. So there's 
225 acres of okay. natural vegetation. I know when we toured it, um, a lot was pointed out uh, and we went down to the area that hasn't been developed. It was, it was already wild, but um, I was just wondering, uh, you know, um, uh, what would be left. Um, what, what is left is primarily forested though. The, okay. The areas like the clear areas where there'll be lawn. Yeah. That there, there will not, there won't be any. Okay. So, yeah. Because I mean, most housing developments in this town, uh, if they didn't clear cut all the trees, and we were fortunate that some mature trees were left, every strip of soil that's not got a tree grown on it, there's it, it's grass right to the curb or the sidewalk, and um, something this huge. Uh, and again, thinking of when we toured it, and obviously where we went, it was all wild. So I was just wondering. Uh, yeah, and part of the amenities of the open space, you know, when I have a community center, um, there is another detention basin planned here. And there's one that we actually just completed constructing uh, on the north side. And they were the same style basin, the wet basin. Um, albeit it was probably constructed better than this, the one that. Uh, other people did. Um, so that would be a feature. They're looking to add uh, a walking trail through the open space to um, so you can go and actually view those. We expect that those are going to have wildlife in them uh, that you can take a look at. Um, and then there's another walking trail that goes out. I think it actually goes up to the power line and then into behind some of the horse stables and things that are over there. So there's um, there actually is the open, the 200 acres of open space will be accessible. Accessible. I, I know for a fact that the community um, residents now actually go down and take a walk around here. This, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. of that so that, in addition to uh, its natural state, there will be animals, whatever lives there, mm -hmm. deer. A lot, of, a lot of deer. There's a lot of animals. No hunting, there. right? It's Hunter's Hill. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just, there won't be any I just want to clarify the part about hunting. Since we have a um, hunter on our committee, we have to mm -hmm. just make sure there's no misunderstanding. Right. Um, and you have at least one. What? Hunters. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes. Probably okay. Three or four. <laughs> Uh, definitely keep him out of I'm there. I'm more of a gatherer. Wait a minute. Um, Tommy, do you hunt? Tommy hunts. Oh, yes. He's who I'm talking about. Oh, I thought you were talking about. No, no. I'm talking about the uh, member that's present. I was like, wait a minute. Um, so for the residents, now, assuming these, uh, you make out okay with planning and conservation and everything is, you're going to start digging, uh, excavating. How long is it going to take to build these facilities? If I were a resident down there now, Am I going to be in that building by Christmas? Or is that, no, oh. next year? Oh, it's spring. Yeah, spring. We're, we're okay. Spring. Okay. Maybe if it was prefab. Uh, there's, <laughs> <laughs> there, there was talk of the golf course years ago. That's not involved. That's okay. All right. Totally. Okay. All right. Any questions about this plan or anything about this project? So this will be on next month for an update. Um, and uh, we'll get, as, as you continue with the work, uh, if we get an, uh, a report uh, even once a month, I mean, obviously the, the reports that you're sending in are needed, but if you just send us a, a report, we'll keep you on the email list for the uh, agendas for Stormwater. Okay. So you know when the meetings are. And even an email that says nothing new to report, uh, we're, excavating this or we're installing this or uh, we're in the uh, yeah, yeah, basic so infrastructure of whatever. The construction schedule, what I expect will happen is, um, again, we'll, we want to get started right away. So we'll clear the trees for the community center, um, get going on that. And since we'll have work crews there, start right away on the mitigation area, get that in uh, this planting season. And then um, it is dry now, and if we have time and the amount of manpower, we can put in the four bay for the basin. If that 
if things do change and we do start getting rain and that does have four feet of water in it when you know it's wet, uh, we'll probably wait to do that until the summertime of, okay. of next season. Okay. Uh, but I would expect that, you know, I can let you guys know, um, we'll have a wetland scientist on site uh, to oversee that. Okay. Um, I'll send uh, the commission through Lisa. Um, you know, we can send some updates on what's going on here. As Lisa said, this will be continuing once we get the building kind of up and everything prepped. They'll be working through the winter on the interior of, of that. Okay. I do have a question. Mm -hmm. So as far as the erosion controls and the silt sacks and all, mm -hmm. and the construction entrance, I mean, I will be doing inspections, but does the stormwater committee want to do inspections too? Or I would think it would be a good idea if they were done in conjunction with you being there. Yeah. Or if you go out, for example, I know Tom goes with you sometimes, but if you happen to go out on your own. Oh, I, have to I didn't say that. I said he goes out with you sometimes. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Ferry sets his own schedule. You can ride it. As I just time. asked Mr. Ferry. Yeah. Um, seeing as how I can't get my CDL because of Mr. Ferry. Anyhow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Do you want me to coordinate a site? So yes, that? but if you if you go out and he's not available, then and we get a stormwater committee meeting coming up, I'm just going to call on you and say, Lisa, tell us about the site visit okay. and whatever. If you do it together, then either one of you can make the presentation. Yeah. Uh, if any committee members are available and they want to say, hey, when you go out to Hunters Hill, I'd like to go out there and see what it's like. I don't think you've been to that I site. Haven't. I haven't. So. Um, just, if I just can, coordinate yeah, if I can with, uh, in, I'd love it. yeah, I just coordinate with Lisa. Yeah. When we were out there, must be close to a year ago, if not more, um, this whole area that they're talking about was literally, I call it natural or wilderness. Okay. We saw her up to the point of where everything stopped. And then we went around and rode around here, there, and saw where the big, I'll call it septic field is going to be and all that. And, um, so I haven't been back there myself, but uh, but anyhow, yeah. Uh, if if somewhere down the road yeah, you definitely. can do it, just coordinate it with uh, Lisa. So at least when we're talking about stuff, you're going to be familiar. Perfect. Yeah, you know, uh, kind of no, like we've been we did with um, when they were going to do the solar farm, the first site visit at Arujo's when we went way out in the boondocks yeah. and saw the when the trees were there and all that good stuff. Okay. All right. Okay, okay. Uh, anything, Mr. Ferry? Uh, Mr. Pearson, do you have any comments on Hunters Hill other than whatever you've heard here today? Anything you want to wish to comment on? Uh, no, I don't have anything else at this time. Okay. I think we're all set, Evan. I just ask if uh, you guys do plan on a visit, just let us know so we could take you around and make sure it's okay. safe. Everything, I'll say everything will be coordinated through Lisa and or Tom. Uh, and what they'll be the contact person to sure. say that yes, we get the stormwater committee or some members want to come on site and make sure that uh, we we've done that with solar farms simply because um, it's easy if there's somebody there because if you just walk around and say what's that or what happened there and there's nobody there you're wasting time yep. and as much as there is an existing neighborhood there, you know, everything else behind that is an active construction site. Right. So we want to make sure everybody right. is, uh, yeah, that's get nice. stuff, yeah. You know. yeah, we usually require um, appropriate gear to go on site. Yep. Okay. Okay. As right. long as you don't look at it like it's a solar farm. You know. <laughs> I've done solar farms plenty of my life. And, you know. There's no problem with solar farms that's if, good. in fact, they drain. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Solar farm sets a challenge, so, uh, but yeah, you, I think you'd be impressed. Well, we've only had one challenge in Dayton, and it won't. Hopefully, it's going to get resolved. But when I say yeah. my records indicate 2018, and we're now in 24. So I've, I've designed probably 40 megawatts of uh, solar farm sites, and they they do. It's. Uh, they look like they're easy, but once you kind of open things up, they get a little tricky. The, and I don't want to sound overly critical. The problem was this one started before COVID. Oh, we don't need to talk about their solar farm. That's okay. And <laughs> unlike, unlike, unlike the other solar farms, 
The company building this is located in Canada. So with COVID, nobody could come. Oh my goodness, yeah. And um, it was no secret. Uh, there was no personal opinion, and I told him this many times. There was no local oversight to, uh, in effect, protect the interest of people building this, and I'll leave it at that. Um, so uh, the other ones came along, but like I say, they were within the country. They were the kind of in-house considering, and we could, during COVID, we could still move from state to state, but we could, nobody could move country to country. And that added to the uh, part of the problem. So all I'm getting at is, you know, we have a good crew that's working there and uh, everything's being designed exactly, uh, constructed exactly the way that um, I designed it. So um, I'm proud of the work that they did. And if you guys mm -hmm. want to take a look, we'd be happy to show you around. As long as there is oversight that understands I'll say how we do things in this town, because we've heard many times, nobody else requires that, nobody does that. Well, this is Dighton. Uh, we have not had problems. It's just like, this is well, these are our requirements and okay, we'll take care of it. So, you know, so we certainly appreciate and the fact that you've got the oversight that you have. Perfect. Okay. All right, very good. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Thanks so for coming once, in. Yeah, like I said, once we're done with uh, CONCOM and the planning, we're, uh, Get hit the ground running, and uh, like I said, we'll give you guys updates and let you know what's going on. Okay, so, thank right, you. Thank you. Agenda item seven: approve the minutes of is just July. Excuse me, just July seventeenth. There a motion to approve the minutes of July seventeenth. Uh, I motion. We got a motion to approve the minutes of July seventeenth. Is there a second? I need a second to July to approve the minutes of July 17th. Second. Is there discussion on the minutes of July 17th? No. After all that? No. no. Uh, I'll call the vote then. All in favor? Aye. Lisa? Aye. Mr. Aye. Ferry? And uh, I'm an aye. All right, so the 14th we'll deal with uh, next month. Um, Unanticipated items. This is just a quick update. Tomorrow I'm going to Bristol Plymouth. I'm going to be meeting with the uh, teacher in the um, this commercial design department. Um, we're going to be talking about the calendar for this coming year. I've got tons of pictures. I'm going to uh, sit with Heather with the thumb drive and we're going to make a selection. I got a lot of pictures, but we're going to narrow it down. We'll have more than 12 but we'll have a good variety of, I hope, seasonal pictures so all the seasons can be represented. Uh, for the new 2025 calendar, which we hope to have in hand for lights on. The other thing I'm going to be showing them is the EPA has um, a coloring book online and it's about Thurston, as in thirsty. <laughs> Anyhow, if we can get this duplicated on, I'm thinking newsprint, like, like kind of like what coloring books are put on. And uh, we've got some prices on the, the four pack of crayons, uh, focusing on the youngest members of our community to get the stormwater message out. So uh, the coloring book thing is what we're thinking of. We have bags and we have grippers uh, at the library. I'll be having those for, um, and I'll hopefully the um, coloring books for the November light, uh, I, there at the Rujos. So that's what we're looking at. After that, we're gonna to have to be talking about getting more stuff, but I'm hoping to use up whatever we got in stock on that. And I'll give you a report how I make out uh, with BP and get a cost estimate on what I wanna uh, do. We got the money set aside for calendars incumbent from the FY24 budget. So I'll give you an update on that. Um, so uh, Heather, make a note, uh, update on BP printing project for our next meeting. Any public input? Any correspondence? Um, public input, Woody said he completely forgot his wife is working his tail off now that he, she's retired. So. <laughs> um, oh, you got an email? <laughs> um, correspondence, I don't have anything. Did you get anything, Heather? No. Okay, motion to- Next meeting? Um, 
Fred Wednesday, which is the 16th of October. 1 p.m. here. A uh, motion to adjourn. I so motion. We got a motion. One motion, a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Mr. Ferry. All right, we're adjourned, so you can kill that. I know.